Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. So let's get into it. Now, it starts by saying that if a current carrying wire is placed near a permanent magnet or other current carrying wire, there will be a force exerted on it due to the magnetic field. So remember, we've seen that if a current flows through a wire, the wire itself will produce its own magnetic field in a circular pattern around that wire. So if we place this wire, which has its own magnetic field, next to another magnetic field from either a permanent magnet or another current carrying wire, then the magnetic fields will interact with each other and there is a force exerted on the wire. So it says that the size of the force depends on the length of the wire in the magnetic field, which would be this length here, the current flowing through it and its angle to the field. So let's say the magnetic field was pointing to the right, then the angle to the field would be this angle theta in here. So we arrive at this relationship which you'll get on the relationship sheet in the exam, F equals ILB sine theta, where F is the force in the wire measured in newtons, I is the current in the wire measured in amperes, L is the length of the wire measured in meters, B is the magnetic induction measured in tesla, and finally theta is the angle the wire makes with the direction of the magnetic field, measured in degrees. So just to prove this relationship, I'm going to show you a simulation. Let's say we've got this circuit set up where we've got this switch here which is called a push to make switch, we've got a variable resistor, and we've got a horseshoe magnet with a north and south pole sitting on a balance scale. And we've also got this connected to a battery and an ammeter. So what we can do is adjust the variable resistor to change the resistance in this circuit and therefore the current flowing through the wire. And then we can then calculate the force that the wire exerts down on the balance scale due to gravity. So that could be found from its weight F equals mg, where we take the mass and multiply it by the gravitational field strength on Earth, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So let's say we adjusted the variable resistor and noted down values of current and then calculated the values of force for each current value. If we did that, we could plot them on a graph like this one here of force against current. So just to show you what we would end up with, we've got these points here, and you'll see that this creates a straight line through the origin. So this tells us that the force exerted on the wire is directly proportional to the current flowing through the wire, i.e. as the current goes up, the force will also go up. We can do a similar thing now to investigate the relationship between the force on the wire and the length of the wire in the magnetic field. So this time we're going to keep the current constant and we can do the same as before. So if we change the length of the wire this time and plot the points again on a graph of force against length, then you'll notice we're getting another straight line through the origin relationship. And this tells us that the force exerted on the wire is directly proportional to the length of the wire. So the bigger the length of wire inside the magnetic field, the larger the force will be exerted on it. So going back to the notes, we've seen that the force is directly proportional to the current and the length. And it's also the case that the force is directly proportional to the magnetic field strength, i.e. the magnetic induction or magnetic flux density, and the angle that the wire makes to the magnetic field direction. Next it says that the maximum force occurs when the current is flowing perpendicular to the magnetic field, i.e. when theta equals 90 degrees, and zero force when it is parallel with the magnetic field, i.e. when theta equals zero degrees. The direction of the force is perpendicular to the direction of the current flow and perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. It can be found using Fleming's right hand rule, which is saw at a higher level. So as a recap, using the right hand rule for a negative charge, like an electron, the thumb gives the direction of motion, i.e. the force, the first finger gives the direction of the magnetic field, i.e. north to south, and the second finger gives the direction of the current flow, i.e. the electron flow. So here's a wee summary of the fingers that you'll use for the right hand rule. So you can remember that the thumb is for the direction of the motion, with the M and thumb standing for M for motion. We've also got the first finger being field, and you can remember that as being FF, and you've got the second finger being the direction of the current flow, which you could remember using the C in second, and the C in current. Remember this is for a negative charge only though, and it says to note that for a positive charge, the direction of movement is opposite to the direction worked out above. It is easiest to work out which way a negative charge would move using the right hand rule first, and then simply reverse this. And remember the direction of current flow or magnetic field can be shown using the arrowheads coming towards you, with a dot inside a circle, to mean out of the page, and the back of the arrow, i.e. the cross, to mean into the page. So this arrow analogy is a way to remember the directions shown by these symbols. You'll often be asked to find the direction of the force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field, so I'm just going to show you a simulation to help you understand this. Let's say I've got a horseshoe magnet like this one here, with the poles north and south, and my magnetic field lines are therefore going from north to south, in a uniform field. Let's say I've also got a wire connected to a battery and a switch. So if I was to close the switch, the current would flow from here, the negative terminal of the battery, up through the wire and around back to the battery. And we know we can use the left hand grip rule to find the direction of the magnetic field around 
and we know we can use the left hand grip rule to find the direction of the magnetic field around this straight wire. However, if we place this wire inside the magnetic field of the horseshoe magnet like this, then you'll notice that the magnetic field lines around the wire become distorted, and that's because the two sets of magnetic field lines are now interacting with each other, and we've got this direction of the force exerted on the wire as going to the left in this case. And that can be found using the right hand rule, where we would place our first finger along the direction of the field lines in this direction from north to south. We've also got our current, which is going up the way in this wire, and we've got our thumb which would point in this direction of the force, i.e. the motion of the wire. So you can try that yourself. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.